Put your hands together, clap soft. So train. Goodness. There was no negatives. There was no profanity. There was no nothing that would make you that that would turn you off. And all of the music was about love. Don Cornelius brought the African American community together every Saturday at the same time. We were all in the same place watching Soul Train. That's power. It's, it was about show business and showtime and Soul Train. Everybody on the show was a star. So trained and everybody said loud Well all the brothers and sisters get together louder Don Cleans was like everybody's uncle because every Saturday morning he was in your house <laughs> chilling for a good hour. It was about music and the love of music and people getting together, having a good time. Family would gather around whether we were together or not. You watch the Soul Train, you know who on there? So, so, uh, you, would, you would just know. It wasn't even like, I don't remember looking at a clock saying Soul Train is on. I remember just knowing that it was coming on. Don't you be nervous, Superstation. With only two years of television experience, Don was inspired to create his show idea, Soul Train. Don Cornelius confided his idea in his lifelong friend, George O'Hare, a manager at Sears and Roebuck. Well, I went to visit this, uh, uh, this friend of mine was a Sears executive. His name is George O'Hare. And I, I used to bounce ideas off of him. And, and uh, uh, he would always listen. He, he never uh, was willing to jump on anything. And, and, and give me a whole bunch of Sears advertising in order to try this project out. One day I came into his office and I sat down next to him. He was on the telephone and, and I, I didn't interrupt him. I just whispered in his ear, Soul Train. And he put his phone down. And he said to his uh, secretary, hold my calls for now. And that, that was when I, I was sure that I, that I had something. I mean, it was very difficult over the years to uh, convince advertisers and convince people that this vision that he had was, was something that we, we really needed. He, he always talked to me about uh, finding a need and then serving that need. Me and Curtis Blow went to Doc Canaze for the breaks. We hadn't been nowhere. I mean, we had been, we went to Amsterdam where they liked our music, but nowhere in America, and finally, the brakes broke, and it was a big racket, and we were on Soul Train. It was like all the stuff we did up till then was nothing. Don Cornelius Soul Train was the biggest thing that could ever happen to us. When we got on Soul Train, when I was when I was when I came out with my records, it was like I made it to the top. I wasn't concerned about anything except Soul Train. Soul Train was it. That was like you know being on the cover of Jet, and that's and the same thing with, with Soul Train. Once Soul Train embraced you. You know, I've been stamped uh, approval. You are officially important to black culture. Marv, what would you like to do for a staff? I'd like to do Let's Get It On. watch Soul Train right away so watching Soul Train on Saturdays didn't happen gosh until about 13 or so uh, my father's a preacher so I wasn't allowed to look ahead of time so when I saw what they were doing <clears throat> I wanted to do it <laughs> it was dances I had never seen before people with afros I've never even fathomed before but um, it was our people on TV and that was always good to see the Soul Train weekly show was formatted like his radio show, with a small resemblance 
to American Bandstand. Dick Clark approached me. Uh, he wanted me to endorse his concept of a new soul train with us's, meaning black artists. We absolutely refuse to, to imitate, imitate what, what Bandstand did in terms of the overall aesthetics of it. Uh, well, it bothered me the first time I heard it, but after I thought about it, I, I had to be realistic. That's what it was. It was a black American bandstand, but but the blackness of it all is what made it made it different. I had received a letter from the gentleman running ABC Television, who I knew extremely well, and I told him that you know, since he had turned Soul Train down, why were you guys going to allow Dick Clark to make to to have a, a show with Afro-Americans when he had his bandstand. Well, that means there would be no Don Canese today. Chicago was known as the dance capital of the world. It did not take long for heavyweights of soul and R&B to desire an opportunity to capitalize off Don's idea. Watching Don talk about us, like standing like kids looking up at Don, it was unbelievable, the experience. I, that felt like something. I, you know, I don't think I, very, very few times you get to feel in your lifetime. You know, um, I always say I'm not a results guy, but there was a moment there where that reminded me to keep going, to stay on the hustle, because he reaffirmed that work, work mattered, paid, it paid off. You know, a lot of people don't know that Soul Train was the longest running dance show ever. You think the black people were the only people watching a show that was on TV for 35 years? I don't think so. Coming up next, the Soul Train leaves Chicago, and the next stop, L.A. Seven